It's easier for people to imagine the end of the world than it is for them to imagine the end of capitalism. I, I think it's uh, important to just remember that, uh, that, that we live in, in this you know, the, the time of deep inequality and, uh, and pervasive hunger. Let's get some facts straight. Um, people say, well, this, this world has, has fed so many people more than ever before. What we're seeing now, and, the, and this is a trend now for the past couple of years, the number of people who are hungry is going up. And the proportion of humans who are hungry is also going up. Uh, so if this system is so great, how is it that more and more people are now malnourished? Part of the reason is, uh, I mean, you know, if, if you look at the data, why are people going hungry right now? Conflict, um, climate, because climate change is now making food uh, significantly harder to, to, to grow. Uh, some estimates say that by 2050, uh, crop, you know, the, 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 actually 2030, the percentage of crops that we'll lose will be you know, greater than 20%. 20, 20 um, but the main reason is capitalism. I mean, even in the United States, uh, we have over 40 million people who are food insecure. This chicken nugget embodies all seven of the cheap things that we think that capitalism needs in order to avoid paying its bills. First of all, to get the chicken, uh, it's, we feel as humans okay with taking this animal from its original form in the jungles of Asia, and we can mutate this animal. We feel that we can breed it and transform it to a modern creature that is so big, with its breasts so large that it can't walk, and it lives its life and it dies in a cage. Then, uh, that's cheap nature. Uh, then we feel like, okay, well, we can treat workers very badly in order to turn this, nugget, this chicken into a nugget, uh, and around the world, poultry workers are treated very badly. Uh, and, and in fact, there's a, a story, it's, a, it's an interesting story to tell, in, uh, in America right now, there's a place called Christian Alcoholics and Addicts in Recovery. What this organization does is take the people who are going to jail and puts them into a, a center where in the day they pray to Jesus, and then by night they work on the chicken production line for free. And then, of course, when bodies are broken, who looks after the workers? Um, it's usually communities uh, where, and it's usually women's work to, to engage in this care. And cheap care is also a part of capitalism. Uh, and then, of course, the birds and the people need to be fed. And the chicken nugget is cheap food for, for humans. And the food that the chicken eat uh, is uh, subsidized in the United States to the tune of billions of dollars. And then you need cheap energy to, to heat the hen houses, to transport the chickens, to be able to make this stuff. And cheap fuel is, of course, the reason we have wars in the Middle East. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we're, we're getting to, to then thinking about, well, you, know, you need cheap money. You need low interest loans. And uh, Italy knows all about that uh, to be able to keep an economic system going. And you need cheap lives, this regime where some people are worth other, more than others. And uh, the people who are on the, the chicken line in the United States is women and people of color. They are the, the disposable ones. The, the, the dynamics of capitalism stutter for uh, there's no inevitability about capitalism sweeping the world. Uh, and in the same way that, that there's nothing inevitable about climate change uh, in, in the, way, the way that we understand it. C capitalism has finished uh, the, the planet more or less, and if, you know, if, we, if we let it continue, there's going to be a very radical, radically different planet on which we find ourselves and our children find ourselves not long from now. Uh, and yet we still, uh, we, we still believe in the system uh, that has wrought this massive destruction to save us. You know, if only we recycle, uh, if only uh, the oil companies uh, will create some innovation and they suck carbon out of the air, if only unicorns were possible. There are ways in which you can arrest capitalism. Uh, and not just by opting out and going to a commune. It's very interesting that in the United States, uh, some of the worst paid workers are now getting $15 an hour, and one of the world's biggest capitalists, Jeff Bezos, the world's richest man, uh, has been forced to pay his workers a little bit more uh, so that they can survive. This doesn't happen by magic. It happens because people organize, and he saw that if he tried to push through with his low wages in America, uh, he would find trouble. Actually, capitalism has to fight every day to win, and sometimes it doesn't. The, 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 the good news is that there are so many movements around the world that are already doing this. I love uh, the international peasant movement, La Via Campesina. So there are 200 million members around the world. Um, they are tackling a range of things at a range of different levels. Small farmers feed the world and cool the planet. 
Uh, but they also are very interested in gender, in, uh, gender equality. One of their key issues is around ending domestic violence and ending structural violence of capitalist patriarchy. 200 million people, it may not seem that many com you know, compared to the, the, the global number of 7 billion, but A, it's a start, and B, what's very interesting is the way th that some of their ideas are being translated into other contexts. We don't have very much time, and the data is all saying that we have to do a great deal more than we're doing right now. How do we fix that? Uh, again, there are movements that, that can show us the way, but part of, part of the difficulty is the imaginative recalcitrance. It's hard for us to think about different ways of living, even if uh, away from our work. We, we exchange freely, we give, we're generous, we're, we, we participate in a social economy that's very different from the capitalist one. Uh, and I think that, that part of the, the struggle now is to show people that actually things can be very different from the way that they imagine. Oh, my God.